Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Peter Evans. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of the precision agriculture. So get ready to explore the 10 game-changing models, the ones that you're seeing on your screen, that are revolutionizing the modern dairy farm management. These include the pan, the cow pen, the cow inventory, the barn inventory, and the rest. So, join me on this captivating journey as we uncover the power of innovation and data-driven decision-making in the realm of dairy farming. And so, let's dive into the code. From the previous tutorial, we had already defined the dairy app and the dairy inventory app. So we shall start with the models of the dairy app. And in this case, the very first new model is the barn model. This barn model would represent the barn in our dairy farm and it has two fields, the name and the capacity. The name would be a character field for the name of our barn in the farm. Then the capacity would be the maximum number of cows that a barn can hold at a specific time. Moving forward to the cow pen model, this model would represent a specific pen in our farm and it has four fields. The barn, a foreign key to the barn model representing the barn to which this pen belongs. The type field that would represent the type of the pen could be fixed or a movable pen. Then the category, which will be a choice field as well, that will specify the category of the pen. That is, it could be a calf pen, a heifer pen, etc. Then the capacity, just like the barn as well. The maximum number of cows that a pen can hold at a particular time. And then now we have this clean method that is being overwritten. This is a default method that's always been found within the models. So, all we do is first of all, we check. That is, this evaluation will evaluate if the pen that is being saved is actually being created as a new pen object in our database or if the pen is something that is just being updated. So that is the reason why if the type of the pen is fixed, I told you that we have two choices. We have the fixed and the movable and then there's the primary key. Primary key is always only available for objects that have already been saved in the database. And so this evaluation over here shall be executed whenever a pen is being updated where if the type of the pen is already been fixed and then we want to change the burn of the pen, then it does not make any sense because a fixed pen cannot be moved into a different burn. And so move over to the cow in pen movement. So cow in pen movement is another new model that will be like logging or rather recording the movements of cows in between the pens in our dairy farm. So it has four fields, the cow field, that is a foreign key to the cow model that will be actually tracking the cow that is being moved. And then the previous pen is a foreign key to the cow pen model representing the pen from which the cow is being moved. So this can be nullable. So what this means is that assuming a case scenario of where we've just bought a new cow and we want to assign it a pen. So in that case, it won't have any previous pen or if a cow has just been born, so it does not have any record of a previous pen. And then we have the new pen that will be a foreign key to the cow pen model as well, representing the pen to which the car is being moved to. Then a timestamp that will be automatic recording of the date and time that the movement occurred. Moving forward to the cow in band movement, this operates just similarly as the cow in pen movement, where we have the cow. Of course, this one will be now like will be the field that is tracking the cow that is being moved. The previous barn, this as well is nullable because the case scenario where we just bought a new cow or a cow that has just been born. Then also the new barn will be like logging the barn to which the cow is being moved to and the timestamp to record the date and time that the cow was moved. And that's it for the four new models. So we shall head over to the serializer where we have the four serializers for the new today four models. We have the cow in band movement serializers, the cow in pen movement serializer, band serializer, and etc. So there's nothing much over here since all these serializers just technically serialize all the fields. So for that, I'll just keep it in order to save time. So we move over to the views. Here in the views, we have the four new views as well, corresponding to the four new models that we created today. Three of these views are model view sets except only one which is the read only model view set because the cow in pen movement model actually populates the cow in band movement model so 
technically, whenever we move a new cow, or rather, if we move a cow from one pen to another, or from one pen to another in another barn, then it will actually trigger the cow in barn movement model to be saved. So technically, this view set is dependent on this other view set. So that's the reason why it only allows the list and retrieve functions. But for these others, the ones with the model view set will allow all the crude operations, the create, retrieve, the list, and delete. So all of them are defined. And so we head over to the URLs. Not much over here. It's only that I've just registered the four new view sets, the band view set, cow pen view set, the cow in pen movement view set, and the cow in band movement view set. So for that, I don't really think if I need to explain anything over here. So there's something worth to note. I was talking about choices. So I have refactored the choices in a way that makes it easier to actually handle the choice fields in our model. So in this case, we shall be having these several choices, the breed choice, the sex choice, the cow availability choices, <coughs> the pregnancy choices, the cow pen type choices, Here's where I was talking about the movable pens and the fixed pens. Then we also have the cow pen category choices where we can have a calf pen, a sick pen, bull pen, a dry pen, and just a general purpose pen. So I think that's just enough for the today's daily explanation. So we shall move over to the daily inventory app. So for the daily inventory app, the new models that we've introduced today are the car inventory, the ban inventory. So let me start with the car inventory. So this model here will be representing the inventory of cows in our farm. So actually it has the fields of the total number of cows, total number of male cows, total number of female cows. It is see, these are quite descriptive. So you already know that this field, sorry, this model will be actually storing the count of the respective male, female, cows that have been sold or cows that have died in our farm so i don't really think if i need to explain a lot over there but now let me move to the cow inventory update history this model actually depends on the cow inventory updates so what's happening over here is that we shall connect the cow inventory and the cow inventory update history with a signal so that whenever there is a change or whenever there is a field that is having new data then we are creating a cow inventory history where the number of the cows will be saved and the date that there was an update in the cow inventory so technically that's what's happening over there then we have the barn inventory just similar to the cow inventory but this one has four fields the barn itself the number of cows the number of pens and the last update so the reason why this is quite a little bit different from the car inventory is that in our farm we can have several bands and each and every band should have its own inventory this is quite different from the case of the car inventory because we really don't need to have several inventories or rather an inventory for each and every car because that does not make any logical sense so that's the reason why for each and every barn, we shall have an inventory of its own. So, and that's the reason why we have the barn field, which is a one-to-one -one field. So this makes sure that for each and every barn, we have a single barn inventory in our database. Then there's a the number of cows that will be the total number of cows present in that barn at a specific time. And then we also have number of pens. Those are the number of pens available in that barn. And then we have two new helper methods in this band inventory that would allow us to actually complete the functionality of what we need to have in our band inventory. So this is how it works. Whenever there is a signal that is fired, of course, since this is a band inventory, the signal will be fired from the band itself. So whenever that signal is fired, then it will call this function to help populate these fields accordingly so there is this add cow and there's this remove cow so they respectively do their job with respect to the capacity for example the add cow will only add the cows up to the capacity of the barn with which 
if a new cow is added when the burn is already full, then it will throw this error. The burn capacity is exceeded. Similar to the remove cow, where it will only remove cows until the number of cows in the burn equates to zero. And then moving forward to the other new model, the burn inventory history. So this will be like logging the history or rather the updates that are occurring in the, the burn inventory. So that's the reason why there is also another foreign key linking to the burn inventory and also we have the number of cows and the timestamp so this is done automatically and then the number of cows will be like logging the number of cows at the particular time that a burn inventory got an update so we move forward to the cow pen inventory this cow pen inventory is linked to the cow pen so this is the logic over here we would want that each and every time we are able to tell the number of cows are a specific pen in our farm. So that's the reason why we have a cow pen inventory that is a one-to-one -one field to a cow pen. This means that for each and every cow pen, we shall only be having a single instance of the inventory. So I hope that makes sense because it's just similar to the burn inventory. So it also has the method, the add cow and the remove cow and finally we have this cow pen history model that actually depends on the changes that are happening in our cow pen so it has the four fields the pen the burn the type number of cows and an automatic timestamp so the pen will be a foreign key of course to the cow pen and the burn field will also be a foreign key to the burn model then the type as well so what will be happening is that there will be a signal that is being triggered from the save of a cow pen that subsequently triggers the cow pen history to be saved. And so now that I'm done with all the six new models in our data inventory, all of them are connected through signals. And so let's head over to the signals that are connecting all these models. So starting from the very first signal, and so we have this signal create and update cow inventory that is actually being triggered whenever a new cow is saved in our database so you might be wondering the reason why we are creating a new cow inventory here manually actually we are not creating it manually the logic here is that whenever we have a new farm where we do not have any cow technically we won't be having any cow inventory and so whenever we save the very first cow it will like check first of all if there is the cow inventory if it's not there then now we create it so that we cannot populate the fields respectively with the correct counts of either the number of cows male cows sold cows and the dead cows so after doing so we save it then we create a new inventory update history so the reason why i've added this cow inventory refresh from database is that this would ensure that we have the correct cow inventory update history logged with the correct values for example the cow inventory update history will log the number of cows that will be an instance of the total number of cows that is already saved remember now the code runs from the up to down so it will save refresh and then return the correct total number of cows after the save and then we move to this new signal create cow pen inventory and history so this signal will be triggered whenever we save any cow pen instance in our database so what happens is that the very first time that we save a new cow pen it will go ahead and create a cow pen inventory for that or if the cow pen had already been saved meaning that it's being updated then of course this get or create method will return the created to be false and it will just retrieve the pen inventory and then after doing so, we create a new cow pen history linked with the cow pen that is either retrieved or created over here. Then moving forward to the create burn inventory. So this signal would be triggered whenever we save a new burn. So this is how it works. Whenever a new burn is saved, it will check if it's created, meaning that that new burn is actually saved and it's not updated then it will create a single instance of the corresponding burn inventory and then 
the last signal for today we have the update cowpen inventory and also the burn inventory so this signal is fairly large and it's being triggered by an update of the cow in pen movement so these are it works we check first of all if that is a new record then if there is a previous pen remember the cow in pen movement had the fields the cow the previous pen the new pen and also the timestamp so if there's a previous pen remember this previous pen was nullable so at times you can get that it's null so if there is that previous pen what we do is that we actually update the inventory where that pen is coming from what we do is remove a cow from the cow pen inventory associated with that previous pen where we also check if the previous pen had a ban of course it will be having but this is just another method of just ensuring that everything is safe over here because technically for us to save a pen it has to have a ban and then we now update the ban as well accordingly and after updating the ban then we create a new ban inventory history so after that we handle cases where there is no previous pen meaning that the previous pen field is null so in that case we'll be only having the new pen field that is populated with the pen instance so remember our our cow in pen movement had the fields the new pen the previous pen the cow as well as the timestamp so we can access because this is an instance of the cow in pen movement we can access the field of the new pen so we actually update the inventory of the new pen that the cow is being moved to so after doing that we do the very same thing to the inventory the burn inventory that is associated with this pen that is updated over here so we shall as well call the add cow for the burn to populate the inventory data for the burn then create a burn inventory history and in this second last block of code what we simply do is we check if the instance has the previous pen and the new pen populated and then we check if the bands of the previous pen and the bands of the new pen is the same because technically we can move from one pen from one band to another pen in another band so if that's the happening as in this case then we create a new cow in band movement record where we populate the data based on the instance records that sent with the cow in pen movement of course there will be the correct records and then we also check or rather we handle the situation where we do not have a previous pen and so what's happening over there is that whenever there is a new cow in pen movement where there was no any previous pen that means that the cow has just been introduced into the barn we will as well create a cow in barn movement for that respective cow in pen movement but the previous ban will be none because this was also uh, allowed as a nullable field. So now that's it for the signals. We move over to the serializers. So there is nothing much to talk about here in serializers. What, what's happening over here is that we're just serializing all the fields for the new six models that we've added in our data inventory. And it's just like everything. There is no any special provisions or any new code over here. So... I just head over to the views so over here in views as well we have six matching view sets where all of these view sets are read only view sets because now you can understand that everything that's happening within the data inventory is being triggered or rather being populated through a signal and does not need any manual entry so starting over with the car inventory view set of course all of these are read only model view set but this is the one that is quite unique where i'm overriding the list method of the view set we know very well that read only view sets provides the list and retrieve but in this case i'm restricting the list because technically we will only be having a single instance of the car inventory in our database so it makes sense only to restrict the detail view but for the rest all is the same it just like allows the list and the retrieve because most of this for example we have this one that is a history view set of course it will be able to retrieve a single instance of the of the history based on the primary key or its id as well as re retrieving a list of the car inventory update history and uh, now 
since we're done with that we now head over to the urls where just like the daily urls there's nothing much except for the new six routes added over here for the new six view sets the car inventory etc so i do believe that with that i have fairly touched almost all parts that i've actually introduced today and uh, one final thing to talk about or rather to go over is the tests i know now we are having the app growing large and more complex and like testing it will be very difficult because we're having the back end and the front end separate so in order to do this django offers a very good way actually a very easy way of doing the testing so i'll be only be going through maybe two tests so one in the daily and also one in the daily inventory app because the tests are so many so I, in the interest of time i cannot actually touch all of them so I'll quickly go over a single test in this test models of py so well let's go over this the kind pen movement so this is fairly nice to explain because i see it as a lot of stuff so this is a test case where we shall be testing the kind pen movement model so what we shall be doing is that we shall be testing if we can create retrieve delete update and all that stuff so we have this method the setup method i think from the previous tutorials i had touched about it what it does is that this is a default method inside this class or rather inside this test case that will set up the necessary objects for our test and in this case we create a new bun a new pen a cow and also we create another new cow movement so what's happening over here is that this method will avail all these variables or maybe all these objects for our subsequent functions or methods in this our class so for example over here we're testing the cow in pen movement so what's happening is that we shall be testing if the cow in pen movement this one over here was actually locked because technically if we do this we shall be saving a new bun and remember a new pen needs a a bun so actually we are assigning the this bun over here as the argument for the bun field in our pen then we create a new cow where we now move a cow into the pen that we've just created so technically we shall be having a cow in pen movement just before we run this method and so that's what we are doing over here and so we check if the cow that's associated with this movement is the very same cow that we had initiated in our setup class so i think that's enough for explaining the test for the models these ones are just the same and they operate on the same principle so i'll head over to the test for the data inventory so let me check for one in the views so yeah we can try this out so this is what happens the setup method is as well over here so what we do we just initiate the objects that we we'll require for our test so in this case since this is a view we will be creating a new object of the api request factory then we will be creating the views the cow the cow inventory and the urls for the retrieve and the list operations since this is a cow inventory so it only accepts the retrieve and the list operations so this is the flow we first of all instantiate a new object of the api request factory so this is what we'll be using to mock the http requests and then we create two new views of the cow inventory view set where one we will be retrieving the instance of the cow inventory and also we'll be trying to list of course we know that our view set does not allow this so that's actually what we shall be testing inside this test case so we create a new cow because that's also necessary to have a cow inventory view set tested so we as well check now because we've already created a new cow we now have a cow inventory technically within this setup class because you remember there is a signal that actually when we save a new cow then a 
a new coin inventory is created so all we do is also initiate that then we construct new urls for the retrieve and the list so these urls are what we'll be passing to the factory so that our views processes them so i won't go deep into how i've constructed these urls the thing is that in our urls for example in the urls of the their inventory we have this app name and then we have this base name so that is what actually the django and the django rest framework that we're using here are using so this is how it works the app name over here is the data inventory and by the way you might be asking yourself the reason why i'm using this app name so think of this this way you might be having a dairy index page then you also have a poultry index page so if you just leave them index index like that it will be very difficult to construct our url so having app name makes it a little bit more flexible and i mean more secure so this is how it works the reverse actually goes ahead and checks anything before this full colon over here it will now know that that's the app name and then now navigate over through this url so this url is the cows hyphen inventory actually this is what we had because if you go over here where is the retrieve so yeah this is the cow inventory so we only have the cows hyphen inventory so i know you are wondering where this hash detail is coming from so this is how the view sets work what it does is that for it to create a retrieve url it always appends the hyphen detail so that it knows that that url is heading to a detail page and actually you can see now we're passing the arguments of the cow inventory primary key so technically we shall be retrieving the detail of the cow inventory so in this case we have this cow inventory that we already have here after creating this cow so the same applies to the list but it's only that over here we won't be having argument because we shall only be accessing the, the list of the cow inventory that is if it can work but of course you know very well that that cannot work because we had already restricted that from our view set so the very first method now that we've already availed everything that we need for our methods so in our very first method the test get cow inventory detail so what we do is that we first of all create a new request then we pass the url of course the http request to require the urls so we pass the url for our retrieve for the get request so now what happens is that we now pass the request itself to our view to process it and so our view requires the primary key which we pass as the cow inventory primary key over here then we assert if the response because our view returns a response so if our response status code is equal to 200 then everything shall be okay so if that works well well and good then now we are sure that our retrieve link or rather our retrieve url works very well and also what we do is that we also check if the data that is passed through the response is the same as the serialized data so we also evaluate that if it's true then we also have another new method over here the test get cow inventory list method not allowed just as i was explaining this view set or this cow inventory view set cannot allow the list method in as much as it's a read only so what's happening over here is that we also create another new request where we pass the url that is for the listing and then we pass that request to our view list and check if the http status is the 45 method not allowed and of course if it passes then we are sure that the way we defined our view sets our models our serializers and everything about the car inventory view set is okay and so i do believe that that's enough for explaining all that we have introduced today and so what i'll do is that i'll just go ahead and now run the tests actually because there are so many i've talked of not even touching the serializers the views and all these others so what we do we head over to our terminal so in this case give it some few seconds to activate then it's over there so 
first of all check where we are then navigate into the the correct directory cd then how well and good so what we do in python or rather in django in order to run this test all we need to do is the python manage.py and test so this will run tests all over the project so you can see over here that we have 63 tests and that's too much 63 tests and i've not even actually tested almost all aspects of the models the serializers i've only tested the aspects of our code that somebody can just quickly think of not even all others and you can see that within less than half a second we already tested everything and everything is okay and so at this juncture i consider that enough for this episode of tutorial so if you find this useful please give me a like share and subscribe if you are new and also if you feel like there's something that you've not understood more so in the part of testing i know that a lot of people might have a lot of issues about testing and uh, doing stuff of that kind you can comment it below and that's it see you in the next tutorial bye bye